Agatha all along. Were the fans right all along that this is going to be bad? Or was this show a bewitching triumph? Let's talk about it. All right, guys, Brent, you're back for Geek Variants. Cover all things Marvel, DC, Lord of the Rings, anime, gaming, Star Wars, and more. This time, Agatha all along, and for me personally, a rousing, bewitching triumph. But you didn't come here to listen to my opinion. You came here to listen to the man, the myth, the Marvel, Mephisto in the darkness himself. Your thoughts on the series? All right. Uh, I think that the series did what it needed to do to start off so far. We've had reviews that have been pretty much solid for the most part uh as far as a it's a show is coming along uh most reviewers have seen anywhere from two to four episodes already so with us only seeing two with the season premiere we're kind of limited as far as you know how we can go with our ratings so we're going to base it just off these two so far so good uh with everything you got to remember that how we got to this point quick recap WandaVision went down. If you haven't watched the series, you should have watched the series. Stop here. Go watch the series. Right. But everything with Wanda, WandaVision, Agatha attempted to drain all of Wanda's power, failed at doing so, and ended up getting locked into a spell by Wanda, and she's been in prison there for three years. Since this happened, Multiverse of Madness has gone on, and Wanda ended up ending herself to destroy the Darkhold. And in the process of that, that helped weaken the magic within you know, what was controlling Agatha who is Agnes at the time. So this young team comes along and helps break her out of the trance that she's in. And once she's broken out and she's free in all her glory, walking across the street, we're able to actually see how this is going to turn out as far as a show with Wanda trying to rediscover herself and regain whatever she has lost. So that's kind of where we are at this point. I think the show did fantastic for a setup. I think the show did really good as far as, you know, reintroducing the character of Agatha to us. Uh, she was fun and over the top. Uh, first episode was a bit, you know, there's some moments where she was kind of like too over the top. But for the most part, she was solid for that. Um, the teen is, uh, I won't even call him a newcomer because I don't know if he's been in anything else. I'm definitely going to look up some of the stuff that he's been in. But uh, he was absolutely a delight. I loved his character. I uh, loved his interaction with everyone that he's came across. Like, it was just fun overall as uh, them being, Agatha being the lead of this and him being, you know, uh, you know, her uh, either supporting star or co-lead, depending on how they run it, how they build it. But uh, it is fantastic to see uh, their chemistry and stuff on scene. If you haven't realized already, basically it's Agatha trying to, Go get what she's lost, and she's got to get together a bunch of witches to do it. Brent, what did you think of it so far? Overall, I thought the witches were a interesting collective of a coven, because apparently witches never are more than three miles apart from each other at any given time. So, hey, just, you know, check your Zillow listings. You may find one. Not too far off, and she goes ahead and meets these witches. She starts basically going through the dialogue of what's going on. She meets a divination witch. She meets a witch involved in potions. She meets she meets a witch of protection. Everything but a green witch, one who is more nature akin or earth akin. Very, very varying degrees of abilities there. Because she needs to form basically a four, a group of four, in order to go down and even start going down this witch's road, which you know the teen has started her on. The teen was like, Yeah, I broke you out. However, I don't know how to go down this road. I don't know how to go down this path. I'm going to do everything I can, though, to help you because there's something that I need at the end of it. It unlocks whatever it is you need. He doesn't really go into the specifics of that. But again, anytime the character tries to say his name or something pertaining to his backstory, Agatha can't hear it or his mouth is covered. So that's probably going to be the huge factor of where you're going to see tons of fans and tons of content creators speculating over the next coming days who this individual is. My non-comic character, I would assume, would be Wiccan. But again, that's just me. 
I'm not the opinion you want on that subject material. But moving along, she forms a nice coven. We have a great interaction. Um, the weirdest thing about it is that it wasn't working initially. And then Agatha decides to go and get Sharon, who is just a gardener with a green thumb, which just now all of a sudden clicked for me. She was talking about a green thumb. We needed a green witch in order to get in and start moving forward with this process. Her name was Sharon. Sharon is about as average as it gets. You ever met a gardening lady in her like mid 50s, late 40s, uh, just kind of going about life with a beautiful garden, nice fence, all that good stuff. Just really nice, really happy, really bubbly. That's Sharon. Sharon gets dragged along, and the minute she's there, they start chanting. They start going through this spell in order to unlock the road, which, if you haven't heard it already, exceptionally catchy. It's still bobbing around my skull like it literally lives there rent-free right now. Ultimately, Sharon is just kind of bobbing. She's just kind of vibing. She don't know the words. She doesn't know really what's going on. But there was some interference that I think Will should discuss because that was creepy. That's all. Get out. So with interference, you got to remember that she's bringing together all these witches to start this new coven. And we're trying to figure out who the names of some of these people are that are all coming in and circling around, you know, Agatha. So with let's start with the first witch that we've seen the thing, which was we saw Wanda's body. We saw the red hair. We saw the name on the tag. It's right there. That's when the realization starts coming. We later end up seeing Vidal who comes in and Vidal is questioning her about like, you know, hey, this is a case we got to solve, whatever, because she's still in this little brain fog. Once that brain fog is broken, we see that Vidal is a messenger, assassin or seeker or something for the Salem Seven. So, like that. so once she finds her, she tries to take her out herself and she's unable to. She puts more or less a mark on her, lets her know that they will find you. They are probably coming for you tonight and leaves her with that in that process agatha now has to collect these bunch of witches because again it's like who is the salem seven who are they what are they going to do but it's got her wigged out enough that we're like we yeah we need to figure this stuff out you need to go down the witch's road yeah that's going to give us what we need that's a good idea let's go do it so it starts collecting the witches and stuff like that finds lilia calderu which is the gypsy witch again you know that's all the divination and stuff that Britt was mentioned earlier the high priestess Jennifer Kale, freaking potions and all that stuff. And all these are comic characters. They all, you know, played a part in the comics in some type of way. And you got uh, Alice Wu, who's uh, a magical guardian that she got her powers from her mother. And now she is there. So they all have powers to some degree, except for Jennifer Kale, whose powers are currently sealed at the moment. So that's why they decided to open this road. In the process of opening this road, we have different animals that show up, kind of symbolizing that something is coming. We see, uh, a wolf we see a rat we see a, a crow right like we see animals appearing so these are symbolizing something is coming and when we finally get down to the nitty-gritty we see teen holding the rabbit nicholas scratch more or less and the salem seven appear on the road in front of the house and they beeline in the creepiest fashion possible doing the whole we come in and then we split into more type deal they get down there and they start, you know, doing their teleporting. They are rattling windows, mystic fog coming in, doing a reach and grab the jump scares and stuff like that. They are doing everything they can. Even the creepy slide down the steps where full on body on the steps just sliding down, trying to grab somebody like they are definitely dialing up for spooky season. And the series finale of the show is on, you know, on Halloween time frame. So they are really setting it up nicely. But either way, all this leads them to have actually summoned. The witch's road and they're able to go down in it team first and get in there before the salem seven can acquire their target and this is where we end where they are sitting on the road and they have to figure out where to go what to do and how to do what they need to do from here on out to either get what they're after and or avoid the salem seven in the process while trying to solve the mystery of what the teen wants who you know the green thumb is like if she's actually a witch or not like we got stuff going on so i'm all in right now i don't think there's anything else that can really draw me in at this moment like let's i'm, I'm trying to find out what the conclusion is so what about you 
we're all left barefoot on this witch's road together, wondering about the great mysteries of magic inside the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I think Scratch, the seven, will help unlock some of the questions we have pertaining to the larger mystery at hand. But again, where Marvel goes with this, who can say? Even the comics, are, Marvel's straight up and like, the comics are just a guide. We're not going panel for panel. There are going to be creative changes made what those will have on the impact of the show because the fact that we had the Scarlet Witch shown in episode one, her face wasn't shown, her hair was shown, the body was labeled as Wanda Maximoff. Look, there's already dropping some big Easter eggs. I'm all in. I hope you, the viewers, are as well. Any final thoughts you want to give them? I don't have too much else. I enjoyed this. Eight out of ten for me. Uh, uh, hey, Salem 7 is there. Um, I'm curious to see if they're going to, you know, show them in their original incarnations or they're going to do something different. Uh, or more or less just keep it through the symbols. And uh, let's find out. Uh, are we going to get, you know, a return of the Scarlet Witch? Are we going to have Agatha regain her powers? Are we going to have her become bigger and better? Right now, this is these are baddies versus baddies right now. There is no heroes necessarily in the mix. So remember, Scarlet Witch herself went Team Sharon. Back, you know, good <laughs> end. So you know, it's we we could see a lot of things. So their cameos could be abound. Like I would be surprised if we see you know Strange at some point. And um, if we do I get a like turn, Zen Wu. Uh, Zen Wu, uh, for you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, it could be you know we could see Speed or Wiccan at some point again. Like that, that is a possibility. Remember, the magic road, you know, the witch's road is a magical plane of existence. Like, it's somewhere that only witches can travel. So, it's an alternate, you know, plane. So, anything can happen here. This is not bound by the normal rules of Earth or anything else. So, all manner of things are coming. And I think it's going to get real spooky real fast. And I'm excited to see it. So, let's go. And if you're excited to see it, be sure to hit that lovely red subscribe button it is in the bottom below it's free greatly helps us out and keeps you notified for all the amazing content we have coming between this magical show agatha all along rings of power the penguin my hero academia and more there'll be plenty of great content for you the viewer to enjoy i've been brent with mephisto himself finally making his appearance in the mcu we'll see you in the next one